With a name like Sheppelkoffigan, this beer better be a mouthful of flavor. <laughs> well, hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I will be drinking the Monkless Brewing from Bend, Oregon, Sheplakofagen, a Belgian-style wheat beer brewed with spices. Just a wee bit of a reminder on wit beers or education if you weren't familiar with them. Um, wit beer, not wheat beer, wit beer. Uh, wit beer, I believe, stands for white beer in uh, Flemish or in Belgium. And uh, I guess you might call it a beer blanche in France. Um, it refers to the unfiltered, cloudy whiteness of the beer as it appears in a glass. Uh, and it's uniquely different. It originated in Belgium. It's uniquely different from other traditional wheat beers, such as those of Germany, the Hefeweizen or so forth. Um, whereas the German white or wheat beers are made using only malted wheat and malted barley and hops, the white beers of Belgium include, usually include unmalted wheat as an adjunct, spices, and sometimes oats. Because the yeast cannot act quite so effectively upon unmalted grains, that is grains that have not been allowed chance to begin the sprouting process, which is how you make malt. The difference between grain and malt is that it is grain that you have allowed to <laughs> begin to germinate and, and convince to begin growing. And then you stop that and that's what your malt is. You'll usually roast it at some point after that to kind of lock it in. But that allows chemical processes to begin in the grain that the yeast will then be able to act upon to produce beer, right? So an unmalted grain is not part of the malt because it's unmalted. So it's not a traditional part of the beer recipe. It is an adjunct, it's an add-on. Um, beyond the adjuncts of unmalted grain, a wit beer will also have spices. And this is apparently due to Belgium's grain fields. They had ready access to grain right there, so they could kind of play around with it more. And nearby Netherlands spice fields and spice trade and so forth. Um, so just in a happy accident, <laughs> one of the great brewing regions of the world. I mean, Belgium is like the godfather of all my favorite beers. Um, happy accident, fortuitous circumstance, providential blessing. Um, Belgium is a place where ancient beer nerds got to nerd out over their beer and produce some truly amazing beers that we get to enjoy today. So this is a uh, monkless, as you might infer from the name of the brewery, is Belgian tradition minus the monks. So there are no monks involved in the making of this beer, um, sadly or happily. Uh, it is described as an easy drinking beer that is created as an ode to friendship. Yay! Friends, the, the real, the real, the real something are the friends along we made along the way. The real, I can't remember how that goes. And it does have the adjuncts of fresh orange jet, zest and coriander, which you would expect. And also what you would expect, this is a relatively low ABV. It would probably still be startlingly high for a Belgium, for a traditionalist, um, but at only 5.4% ABV, it's pretty darn low <laughs> for a US beer drinker. Hmm. And oh, I picked this up at Tacoma Boys in Tacoma yesterday, my first time in there. Nice little store. I've driven by it often enough. We've asked for uh, um, family memberships, annual memberships to the zoo for the last several years from our parents as an easy way to, or a, a fun Christmas gift. And I always drive right by Tacoma Boys on my way to the zoo. So yeah, anyways, I finally stopped in and gave it a try. And they had a very nice selection. So what I'm smelling, there's definitely the coriander there. Um, coriander is the seed of cilantro, typically in the UK or in Europe, you might even refer to cilantro as coriander. And then coriander seed is the seed. Uh, here in the US, we refer to the plant as cilantro and the seed as coriander. So there's just a wee bit of that. And then a very mild, uh, wheaty maltiness. And you can see from how pale that is. Yes, this is very definitely a, a wit, a white beer. 
wheat tends to give a, a, a smoother character to the smell in my experience. Um, apparently oats are also pretty traditional to wit beers, which would be very interesting because you would have a, a, a grain bill, not a malt bill, a grain bill that consists of uh, lightly roasted malts, malted wheat and barley, um, then adjunct of unmalted wheat and then oats, which tr uh, typically add a, a much uh, richer body or mouthfeel to the beer, which is a kind of an interesting juxtaposition to not the thinness, but definitely the lightness of this beer traditionally. Um, I don't know what the malt bill is on this one. Uh, so that's more of a kind of an interesting side point than a, a known fact of this particular one. Uh, I don't really pick up any orange peel in, the, in there per se. It's just a real nice, real nice uh, light maltiness and uh, like wheat, wheat maltiness and then that wee bit of coriander. Let's uh, see how it tastes. Hmm. Okay, yep, tastes good. If you're not super familiar with wit beers, um, Blue Moon. Blue Moon is a macro wit beer. And so wit beers actually, I mean, they, they have a place on the macro shelves. And I know a lot of people who, they love Blue Moons, you know? And I definitely test, taste more orange in the flavor, but it's almost an orange juice. Yeah, it is. It's almost crisp. It is uh, zesty. So I suppose that's the orange juice or the orange juice, the orange peel. Um, and there is a, a lightly spicy herbal character, which I would expect from the coriander. And it has a surprising length to the flavor considering how light colored the beer is. It's not light on flavor. There is a kind of uh, Belgian funk, which I, I just love in Belgian beers in general, that uh, as this is a cold, light flavored beer, um, it comes across as a really nice juiciness. the there's an effervescence to it while while there's not not really a, a head per se i mean there is a head but it's it's pretty light um the bubbles are pretty uniform and also not creamy and in my mouth i'm getting a lot more of those bubbles which gives it a, a soda pop quality like a, a really nice um uh not a hard seltzer a uh maybe a flavored seltzer kind of um kind of character to it It's quite nice. This is a beer that is easy to enjoy, I believe. Um, dry, not not particularly sweet. So you have that that really light wheat, lightly roasted wheat malt, and and then wheat adjunct uh, flavor to it. And then you have this kind of zesty orange peel coming along, and then this really nice um, kind of just a harmony. Of, of the coriander spiciness uh, tinkle on, tinkling along on top. And it hangs out in your mouth for, gee, five, almost maybe 10 seconds. And, and then you have kind of that, you almost have a the, the, the warmth, which you'd expect from a higher ABV beer kind of coming up the, the back end as you're starting to exhale. Um, and that's, I found typical to, or not uncommon with Belgian style beers. This is a this is a very nice beer. It's a very nice beer. Uh, probably surprisingly sippable, given its lightness, but also because it's kind of a soda light character to it, you can just glug it. I mean, don't. But it's not like it's begging to be savored slowly. You could, you know, pour this and take this with your whatever. I'll stop opining on that. <laughs> It's a very pleasant beer. I enjoy this quite a lot. Very tasty, very enjoyable. 
very much my sort of thing. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking and enjoying the Monkless Belgian Ales from Bend, Oregon. Belgium tradition minus the monks. Anyways, all them. I have been drinking their Scheplikofagen Belgian style wit beer brewed with spices. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>